guys and girls hello welcome back and uh, this is the last video before the new year yeah the mask i forgot my mask this is a t-shirt that i've got in my sports bag I'll, i just put it on around my face but it's actually quite a nice neck warmer as well so i'll keep it on for now a little bit nippy today so i'm going to start off with a story and uh, i'm going to tell you about a uh, an incident that happened in the the late 1980s okay um, some of you uh, older people might remember egwina curry yeah salmonella in eggs she put a scare into the nation and people stopped buying eggs wholesale yeah and the shops had to chuck them all out and this at the time i was living in london um streatham at the time actually and uh, this is where we discovered the uh, pallets and pallets loads of eggs behind supermarkets next to the skips well actually there was a lot more there um but we took advantage of that we took a pallet load of eggs home with us and believe me there was about 20 people living in the house so <laughs> You can imagine after about three days, we were sick of making omelettes, sick of fried eggs. And we started throwing eggs at everybody, <laughs> including passers-by. Yeah, well, neighbours that had fun with us. And oh, come on, we were only teenagers at the time. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that was a bit of an eye-opener, actually. Yeah, um, that was a crisis that she actually uh, started in the country. And that was horrendous because she she really did turn some heads because she was uh, giving false information and it scared people. Yeah, And of course, we adv uh, took advantage of that because of uh, that crisis, that particular crisis. But I actually learned, uh, looking at the back of supermarkets, that was back then, that they used to chuck out meat uh, when it just got past its sell-by date they used to chuck the sandwiches away in any other produce so we used to regularly on the way back from somewhere stop behind a supermarket skip and see what was in it and quite often we would take food home which was okay in packets plastic packets that were sealed yeah and we lived quite well yeah um taking in consideration that uh, at that time i wasn't earning much money at all and uh yeah we were eating really really well and our animals as well the meat that we had <laughs> dogs were eating lumps of beef and stuff like that that uh, wasn't fit for human consumption it was just out of sell by date and you know that it's not moldy and it's okay but they've got to do something with them haven't you but Coming into the 2000s, they got wise to this. They started selling produce off cheap, didn't they? Yeah, so you can go into a supermarket and you can get reduced items. And I've told you about these before. Reduced items, and that's just on its sell-by date. Uh, it, people take advantage of it, and sometimes there's some really selfish people. They will turn up with a trolley, the meat comes out uh, for the that's uh, going to be put on the shelves, and they take the whole damn lot. Okay, that's very selfish. Some business owners do that restaurant owners and cafe owners all right they you know it's a way of making money is to get cheap food um but of course there's always the people who are less fortunate that aren't on a good income and i would class myself in that as well yeah so we learned about this a while ago and uh, we used to watch the patterns of the way uh, food is put out or priced down doesn't always uh, work out on a routine they just do it as and when but one thing is christmas time yes right and today is christmas eve i have just been shopping in three separate shops and i have got three separate bags full of meat ready for the freezer the freezer has been emptied over the last few months in anticipation of this because it happens every single year okay so last year we got turkeys we cooked them we shaved it we cut them up and, and froze them yeah this year i have got legs of lamb yeah eight pound 51 okay now that says it's club uh, car price of six pounds 75 a kilogram yeah but that was something like uh 17 pound 06 so that's quite a big reduction yeah now there's this one as well from five pound down to one pound 25 and believe me the shelves are absolutely rammed with this stuff in three different shops so yeah 
we've got ourselves actually quite a lot of meat. I think I've got a whole animal because I've got some beef as well. Which will, uh, Some of it will be frozen, some of it will be cooked and we'll use it for Christmas and then some of it will be frozen as well. So we have supplies for the next few months of red meat. Okay, Some of you might be vegans and disapprove of that, but it's I eat meat. Okay, And I, at some point I'll explain why um, you have to eat meat. We're not um, evolved to just eat plants and vegetable matter and supplements. We do need to eat meat to to get our full protein profiles and our B vitamins, yeah. But that's another thing. Anyway, it's Christmas now, isn't it, yeah? So, yeah, this is taking advantage of a crisis or uh, or wastage or potential wastage because that stuff that I've got probably actually will end up in the skip, okay? Because sell-by date... On it, sell by date. You've got Christmas Day, Boxing Day. That's two shut days. They will more than likely wasted. That'll be wastage. Whatever isn't isn't sold. Yeah. So um, good on Tesco's for doing that sort of thing. Good on Asda's. All of them do it. Littles do like a third off, and their stuff sells straight away, and it's good quality anyway, isn't it? Yeah. So I've told you a little bit of. Uh, my history yeah because i sometimes do live like a rat yeah rats are very clever yeah i know it's not one of those symbolisms or those uh spiritual animals that people uh, um really want to uh vibrate with but they do have their assets the same as eagles and giraffes and everybody wants to be a tiger or a lion don't they predators yeah but all the others are pretty useful so uh, sometimes rummaging through skips which actually doesn't help much often but today <laughs> the back here is loaded up with plywood as well i just happened to find a couple of empty boxes which uh, have been broken up and uh, the plywood is fresh and brand new yeah it's virgin almost and these were um um dpf boxes for trucks yeah so uh yeah i've got some plywood to make myself uh, a new bed this next year that's one of my projects to do yeah and a computer table as well so well happy with that the car is actually pretty good it's loaded up well today so we've, we've done exceptionally well for christmas yeah so guys there are less fortunate people around and i think you've seen kentucky's just had been hit with something yeah um there's news of other things that we never get to hear of and there are people who are living below the poverty line that never see meat like what we get and i do appreciate the society that we live in i hope you do too and i hope you don't look down your nose at myself for taking advantage of crises as such because um you know what we were told a little while back that maybe the shops will not be able to supply enough for christmas well actually that didn't work out right did it in fact there was a glut and there always is a glut wherever there's a crisis like i'm saying there's an opportunity isn't there yeah you listen to what's happening you watch the patterns and they've been keeping up with the stocks in the uk haven't they yeah so you know I thought what I'll do is I'll empty the freezer out, I'll eat all the stuff in there, and then we'll pack it out like we usually do. Every single year we do that, yeah? And it just works out for cheaper living, that's all. Yeah, so, anyway. It's good for preps as well, isn't it? Taking advantage of certain certain times of the year for uh, prepping for just in case something really does happen yeah so anyway yeah what i'm going to do now i'm going to wish you a merry christmas and a very happy new year and i hope you have a prosperous year next year we never know what's coming down the pipeline do we you can assume things you can be told things but until you actually see it happen you just don't know what you're going to get do you so always stay prepped yeah you always got to stay prepped and what i'll do i'll give you a heads up as well funky prepper uk prepper he's uh now uh moved out to wales he's uh opening up uh himself a survival um training uh, in wales which is possibly quite interesting for a few of you if you're into bushcraft skills and you don't know much about that um he's a run into the woods type of prepper yeah whereas i'm sort of a, an urban rat if you like <laughs> and i do like watching his live streams he's, he's funny yeah well, he's, he's an english buddy and he it's you know what i mean so uh yeah pretty good and uh, of course you've still got the american preppers to watch haven't you yeah um see you prepper one of those um still smashing out some pretty good information actually um 
there's one or uh, two videos that I've actually got to catch up on. One of those is making soap. Yeah, I didn't know it was that easy, but it actually is. Yes, yeah, so that's worth a thought. Yeah, if you want to pop over to his channel, I'll have a look at that video. Yeah, a few others like making pemmican as well. And I actually want to talk about that at some point because I've been listening to a book about the endurance and Shackleton's uh, disaster <laughs> ship getting stuck in the ice. But that's another video at some point. Yeah. Um, anyway, guys, have a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you on the other side next year. Yeah. <laughs>